Hello, marijuana traders and investors. It is Rod with Power Group. Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth for a MJ Sector check-in and review. Today is Wednesday, January 27th. And in today's video, we're going to discuss primarily as the focus and stock of the day will be on body and mind. So body and mind was leading the LPs and the MSOs in terms of percentage gain. So we'll take a look at that stock here in just a moment. But you can check out their website as well if you want to learn a little bit more about them. But before we jump into today's content, make sure to smash the like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And diving right into it. So Aurora Cannabis and MedRelief Australia announced strategic agreement broadcast, sorry, broadest medical cannabis product range in Australian market. So the broadest range in that market is pretty, pretty huge. And obviously Aurora was responding very bullish to that today up. It was up about 10% at one point along with Canopy. We also saw Tilray CEO whose stock spiked 1400% in 2018 short squeeze issues warning to GameStop and AMC as those short squeezes the last few days have just gone absolutely ballistic. So we'll look at some charting and we'll start off with BAM here. So on the daily time frame, you can see that we are consolidating on the daily. We started daily consolidation here on the 25th. And we have been in a daily uptrend riding EMA 12. And we did lose that today, but that comes off a big bull move here. And we did get just about to the $1 mark. We got a high of 98 cents. So $1 psychological obviously going to act as strong resistance there. And above $1 we have resistance at $1.05 on the daily, and then after that, $1.31. So that are, those are potential daily targets here, just looking at price action. And we did hold EMA 26, so that's going to be important down at 67 cents. So big range on the day today, and likely set up for an inside bar and tightening range tomorrow. And we'll see how we open up, how the bulls open up tomorrow if we do break to new highs, then we'll look to the hourly chart. We'll want to see a loss of the hourly uptrend to be confident that the daily move is finished. And if we see an hourly downtrend, then we'll scout more higher lows into tomorrow and more consolidation with SPY potentially weak here. You can check out my broader market video that I just posted for an overview of the S&P 500 and the broader market and some individual stock ticks, tickers like BlackBerry and those high flying names, AMC, GME to name a few. So like I said, EMA 26 is going to be very important and taking a look at the monthly, we are forming a little bit of bearish divergence there on the RSI as well on the daily time frame with the price breaking to new highs, but seeing lower highs and lower lows on the RSI price and to price action. So taking a look at the weekly chart. And again, just bear with me here, guys, still nursing a broken hand. So format is a bit different and I'm a bit slower than normal, but volume is waning here a little bit the last couple of weeks, but still tons of volume on this ticker. We just had earnings and it came in in line with what was expected, but we don't have any weekly resistance here up until $1.56. And after that, nothing until all the way up at 371. So this could be set up well. We did have a little bit of a bear break here. Actually, we had a double bottom at 47. So it held 47 cents. But we are in a weekly uptrend as well. And we are in a monthly uptrend now as well. We're also above EMA 12 and 26. First time that's happened since the all-time high. This is definitely one on my watch list. I'll be looking for entries weekly overbought. So just be cautious when we're looking for daily higher lows, usually hourly oversold is a good entry. And we would have touched down oversold here likely on this drop here. We got very close. But usually hourly oversold provides good entry. We had a dip down to 70 cents and from that low, on the hourly oversold up 41%. So congrats to the bulls there. Five minute oversold would have been a nice opportunity as well. You can see here coming off the highs, 92 cents down at 70, five minute oversold. 
ended up paying off huge. So once again, congrats to the Body and Mind Bowls. Taking a look at the weekly chart, you can see here we are going uh, parabolic as well on the 10-week moving average. We're very bullish on the MACD and the stochastic indicators. And we have the 10-week moving average down at 58. Again, we are heavily overbought, but we are above the 50 and the 100 weekly moving average. So we have the 100 weekly moving average down at 79. So that could be a nice area of support and 50 down all the way at 43 cents. Taking a look at the daily time frame, so we do have the moving averages, the 50 golden cross here. So if you were looking for those daily higher lows and entries, it held the 50 D, the DMA, it held the 200 and we had a golden cross. So just on that signal alone provided huge, huge upside. I personally sold BAM a long time ago. I was up 20, 30% at one point and was just waiting to reload cheaper. And this is just one that, you know, gets away and it's impossible to track everything. But again, this is why it's nice to have a community. So you can check us out at pursuitofwealthgroup.com and consider checking us out for a one week free trial, no credit card required. We're an online stock trading community and that's what we do is share setups and trades all day long for private members. We do videos for private members in the morning and throughout the day as well. So if you have any tickers that you want uh, analyzed during the day and prompt responses, you can check us out and join the community. So as well on the weekly, I wanted to point out that we had the VWAP here that was holding perfectly on the weekly. And when we were looking for that weekly higher low would have provided a really, really strong entry. And we also had the 50 weekly, or the 20 weekly moving average crossing through the 50 moving average on the weekly. And that was a very, very bullish sign. And again, just off of the VWAP and those and the golden cross, you would have been up over 50%. So congrats to the bulls there. So we'll take a look at USMJ, the bear list. So we had Bioharvest, High Tide, Ian leading the decline, all down over 10%. BAM up over 12%. GWPH, Harv, honorable mentions as well. But we'll take a look at the MSOs here. So we'll take a look at CL, Cresco Labs. So still daily consolidation. We're seeing increasing sell volume. So again, a lack of liquidity on these names can propel the price very quickly to the upside, but that also holds true for the downside. So when we see lack of liquidity and just not as many shares traded, it's easy to manipulate the price and to beat down the price. And this is again why I've been so comfortable holding Canadian MJ as you're not seeing that, that same type of pattern. Let's just look at CGC on the daily chart. We haven't even, we're breaking out to higher highs. So again, this is why I've been reiterating time and time again, you want to get out of the big US MSOs because they've been tracking SPY. And when SPY starts to roll over, like look at that Cura chart, we're potentially setting up for a bearish EMA 12 and 26 bear cross. We're in a daily downtrend after confirming daily bear flags. GTII broke to a new high. Bull trap, that is just nasty. Bear cross and the EMAs lining up. Big sell volume, we'll see. We need to change the hourly trends back to the bulls. We can confirm uptrends. That'll be step number one. But true leave as well, seeing the same type of action, daily bear flag into a daily downtrend. And we did hold EMA 26, so a bit stronger than the peers, but we could be heading to daily overs oversold here in the foreseeable future, some point in the next few days. If SPY keeps bleeding, it's not looking good for MSOs. So again, I'll, I'll reiterate it again because a lot of people are still looking at me like I have two heads sometimes. And the reason why I highlighted that I felt comfortable holding Canadian MJ over US MJ was because money was leaving the solar sector. It was leaving the electric vehicles. It was leaving the broader market. And the US MSOs have been heavily correlated to the broader market in all of those sectors uh, based on the election hype transition from Trump administration to the Biden administration. So there's a lot of fundamental factors 
And we've seen those correlations and we saw the opposite with Canadian MJ. And again, I, I predicted this because it was beaten up. If you look at True Leaf since March, it's up over you know, 600%. And CGC since March is only up over 200%. So it's not as beating, beaten up, it's a laggard sector. We're starting to see money rotate from those into the Canadian LPs, which are obviously going to benefit from US legalization as well. And we held EMA 12 on the daily on CGC, which was very, very, was very bullish. We didn't break the low here either from this mini higher low that we had at 32.35. And like I said, it's, it was evident that the dollar volume, the liquidity and the just general rotation from those high risk people de-risking, if you're up over 600% since March, you bet that you're going to be looking for other places to park your cash and the beaten up Canadian MJ sector, I think with the great MJ theme of 2021 was just an absolute monster play. So once again, congrats to the bulls out there today. We'll take a look at the bear list, huge T God N down for the most part, almost 10%. And on the bull list, we had SNDL. SNDL was up big after hours here. It's up to 83 cents after hours. I actually called this out to one of the members in our group today, he asked if it was a good time to be scouting entries on SNDL. And I said, yes, we had support right here around the 45 cent. And then we had 42 cents. I said, one could enter risk essentially eight cents and you would have risked, just take a look at it in terms of percentage, would have risked about 15 to 17%. And right now with this move after hours, you'd be up 63%. So those are the risk and reward odds that we like to see. And we were scouting daily higher lows after a big bull move. And we got oversold here, but didn't really get much of a bounce. Didn't clear over EMA 26. Then we got heavily oversold here into the beginning of the day and in pre-market. And that was, the, that was when RSI was crushed on the hourly. We also held nice 50 cent psychological. So we got to 49 and held that 50 cent psychological mark. So that was a great entry. Hourly RSI was crushed down in, I would say the teens, 18. So great entry. We had an hourly bull flag and higher high and confirmation into after hours. So congrats to the Sundial Bulls, CGC, ACB leading the move higher here. So just take a look at some of these names. Take a look at Hexo as well. All these names, Hexo is still a potential daily bear flag. Need to hold support here at 604 and $6. We can hold that. We're also holding EMA 12, which is very strong. Cron lost it, but holding. CGC never lost it. APHA never lost it. ACB lost it, but holding. Now back above. Tilray, same deal. Lost it barely, but back above, saw a hammer and a reversal. We'll see how we open tomorrow. And Tilray had that France news and medical, was chosen as its preferred medical supplier. So you can check out my video on that from yesterday as well. But other than that, that's pretty much all we have at this point. We're riding this daily uptrend here on CGC. As soon as we lose the hourly uptrend, that will be a, mo a momentum shift and personally, I'd look to de-risk or at least trim if we were to lose 34.39, then that would be considered a loss of the hourly uptrend. And tomorrow, if we see a lower high and lower low and confirm a downtrend, that could also be a signal to exit as well. But again, if you're finding this too overwhelming and too much with the hype and euphoria in the market uh, to handle, then maybe you wanna join us, check us out at pursuitofwealthgroup.com and try us for a one week free trial. And like I said, in summary, make sure that you develop a plan and just constantly reassess where you're at, what market conditions have changed and what political landscapes have changed or will change. All these things you need to anticipate and just look at the most likelihood and, and most probable scenarios. And the more due diligence, the more homework you do and the more you you don't want to overthink, but you want to just resort to common sense for the most part 
and try to put yourself in the shoes of these market makers because like I said, they, they don't have anybody else's best interest at heart. And when retail squaz, you know, has those short squeezes against them, they're very quick to go and, uh, and start you know, playing the, the crybaby role. So it's, in my opinion, a little silly what we're seeing in terms of the short squeezes, but we could even potentially see a short squeeze in the Canadian or the US MJ sector. It's just a matter of time and a sector that is primed and just absolute ready to go. We've got political changes and US legalization coming down the pipeline, the Safe Banking Act, we've got the MORE Act, we've got tons of catalysts, we've got Health Canada regulations potentially changing as well. So I know I'm rambling, but just make sure to develop a game plan have stop losses set, be careful out there tomorrow. If SPY continues to roll over, things could, could translate into some downside for the marijuana sector. Not everything will be spared in terms of market turmoil. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Make sure to have yourself a great evening. I had to take a lap, like I said, for doing this video and just clear my head and just get away from the computer. So make sure to take care of yourself mentally, physically, spiritually. I was going to do a crypto update video, but there's not really much to report there. So we'll check back tomorrow for another daily market recap. Thanks again for joining us on the pursuit of wealth for an MJ sector check-in.